the fantasy ad with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fantasy Edge, our Week 16 edition. Um, this week is going to be a little bit uh, different of a show uh, for, for everybody in Championship Week. I don't think you need uh, us telling you to pick up uh, Sony Michelle and Jalen Hurts. I think that's self-explanatory. Congratulations to everybody who made the finals. Like me. Uh, <laughs> yes, Richard, congratulations. <laughs> uh, before we get into everything, I do want to make some apologies for my comments last week. Uh, I said Josh Gordon was debuting last week, and I miscalculated. My math was off. Josh Gordon is debuting in week 16 uh, against the Rams. I'm not in any finals, so I'm starting him with confidence in every league that I was eliminated in. I'm going to have fun this week. And yeah. with that, Richard, uh, how do the rest of your league? how do the rest of your leagues go? Well, my SFBX, I'm out. I didn't. I you have to be first out of ten people, and I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't be first in the conference. I needed uh, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams to do their usual hooking up, but uh, I don't know. They were unhooked this week. But but on the good side, uh, I had a comeback win in the F six P league, and I am in my fourth final in this league and going for my third title. Come on, come on, guys. Got to do it, and so I hope uh, hope I can come through. Yeah, it was quite amazing. You know, I take Johnson caught a caught a touchdown, turned everything around. It was just my fire. Oh, you had a. I noticed that. I, I know that you uh, lost in the. Uh, uh, I guess it was quarterfinals, but you posted a fantastic score this week. Yep, it happens. It happened last year too. Keith eliminated me in the quarters, and then uh, for the rest of the playoffs, I was the highest scorer each week. And I just assume it's going to happen again. So. That'd be two years in a row. Um, I did I forget to introduce us? Uh, uh, go, uh yeah, you're uh, yeah, oh. uh, Jonathan Chan of Fantasy Six Pack.net. The nasally voice you're listening to is uh, myself, Jonathan Chan. I'm the waiver wire guy, and the more distinguished voice is Richard Seville, oh. also Fantasy Six Pack.net. Oh. Yeah, that's quite nice. Thanks. Thank there you go. Proper yeah. introductions for the last uh, the last uh, in season podcast of the year. You know, it's funny Adele says that too. She says you've got a radio voice. I don't know. Like I said, very very distinguished. Oh, thanks. No, you well, too. Moving on to uh, our headlines this week. Um, first one: Michael Thomas placed on injured reserve. Um, not the first time this season he's missed multiple games and and there's a lot of conjecture and you know uh rumors flying around this because he doesn't want to play with drew Brees. we're not gonna focus on that we'll focus on the player himself um could not stay healthy this year high ankle sprain and now dealing with another injury um this going into 2020 michael thomas was looked as the undisputed you know number one receiver the safest guy for ppr leagues and now he was just a mess for mess this year what are you doing with him for next season richard well, there's, well, first of all, there's t- two things, two things. First of all, um, Drew Brees. Is Drew Brees coming back? And uh, there's a connection between Michael Thomas and Drew Brees, and I don't know whether that connection will remain with whoever the quarterback is. I, I really don't see it being, uh, you know, I, I just don't see it being Taysom Hill. Um, I, I think it has to be... Uh, I don't know. It could be Jameis Winston. Not so sure on that, but uh, there's there's that, and there's also this thing that uh, I don't know. There was that locker room controversy. I'm not sure if he's happy on the Saints anymore, and he might want to get traded. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like. I mean, he didn't. Isn't uh, the playoffs are coming, and you know he's on injured reserve, and they're not going to have him. Probably not for the for the playoffs, and so. I, the, he's a big question mark, and with the talented receivers that we've seen coming out, um, I think you can leave uh, Michael Thomas on the board and get somebody really good as well. I mean, there's so many good guys out there. Like we've seen the emergence of DK Metcalf, uh, you know Tyree Kill. I think you know you got him ahead of him, Devontae. Uh, he's no longer the must-have guy. I think there's better guys, or maybe if, maybe not better so much as on par. Uh, enough with him and especially with the other emerging guys like I mean Justin Jefferson's looking like he's going to turn into a WR1 next year I mean he's already close to that now and and who knows with uh, Keenan Allen I mean he's got a good rapport with uh, Justin Herbert so I mean there's so many good wide receivers you can get I really don't think Michael Michael Thomas is just someone that you have to get I don't know how you think about it but that's that's how I feel yeah I think Thomas has moved down to like um, a tier below Adams and Hill, because with those two, 
you know what you're going to get. Even with Hill, you know, in his, he tends to have some boom bust stuff, but for the most part, he's pretty consistent. Um, yeah. Mahomes just looks for, looks for him everywhere. So I think yeah. Adams, Hill are at the top. And then you can put Thomas in that, that second tier of receivers. Cause if he's playing, he's still going to get targets. Even with Taysom Hill, he, you know, he had a hundred yard game and, uh, double digit target games as well. So if he's playing, uh, you can't deny like the the volume that he gets. Yeah. Uh, regardless of you know the kind of routes he's running, which is what started that fight in the first place. But, but yeah, it's the second tier of receivers there for next season for me, anyways. But I mean, there's a lot of high target receivers that, that go in for touchdowns. And now, um, he's not, I mean, he's pretty sure handed he gets. But I mean, you look at Allen Robinson. I mean, he, I mean, he's probably going to leave the Bears, and who knows wherever he goes, he might get on get on with another good quarterback and get. Uh, Target. So it's all about it's all about targets and receptions and and if you get on a good on a, on a good offense, the Saints just happen to be a very powerful offense. Or were I mean they're not looking. I don't know. They've kind of declined in in the sense. Well, they haven't declined as bad as the Steelers have, but they're... well, they declined. They had Taysom Hill for three weeks, and then Drew Brees came back at obviously not a hundred percent. True. He was very very clearly hurting uh, this this past week. Very clearly hurting. Yeah, but you know, but for the big teams that are like the Chiefs, you know, like Tyreek Hill, like a very powerful offense. You get Tyreek Hill and Green Bay, powerful offense. Uh, any receiver on a good, powerful offense. I mean, there's there's good, like the Seahawks even, you know. Um, I know Russell Wilson has, uh, isn't throwing as many passes, but the thing about Russell Wilson is that he's generally, uh, when he throws the ball, it's going to get there. Um, he's a pretty accurate passer. He's pretty efficient. So <clears throat> even though he doesn't throw a lot, but I don't know. I think that's the, the, I think that's a lot of the key is, is, is efficiency. Like, I don't know if Kirk Cousins was a little more consistent. I mean, when, you know, Kirk Cousins has a good game, it's really good when Kirk Cousins has a bad game. It's like Baker Mayfield, you know, like Baker Mayfield, when, when Baker Mayfield is, is hot, right, right now, Baker Mayfield's pretty, he's on a hot streak right now. And, uh, he's got guys catching balls all over the place, you know, he's, he's making, he's making like fantasy worthy players, like, you know I mean, Donovan People Jones, you know, like, I mean, he's, if, if, uh, Baker was a little more consistent, you know, you, you could get, uh, guys on, uh, good offense. But back to the thing about Tommy Kill Thomas, yeah, he's, with, with all these receivers that are so many good receivers out there right now, and, and emerging receivers, you know, like, there's going to be guys that are going to be, you know, competing in, in the top, in that top tier next season. And, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. For sure. Uh, onto another injured receiver, uh, who somehow played fewer games than Michael Thomas, I think, or maybe the same. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. I apologize, but Pretty uh, close. Kenny Galladay, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, Kenny Galladay, uh, in and out with a hip inj- with hip issues all year long. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's going to be back to the end of the year. Uh, he still hasn't practiced uh, as of this morning. Um, so he hasn't practiced in over n- nine weeks. It's been eight weeks since he's had a practice. So uh, it's it's really tough. And going into next year, you know, he's a free agent. We don't know where he's going to go. Is he going to go to a you know a team with a QB like Matt Stafford, who's going to give him those 50-50 balls and you know throw with reckless abandon into the end zone where Galladay can do his thing? So it's tough to tell. Uh, Galladay is one of those wait and see kind of guys that can't really rank him at the moment until we know what his situation is going to be. No, uh, you can't really rank him. And and again, he's he's not a guy that you really have to seriously target. Again, a similar situation to Thomas. There's other guys out there that are just uh, really good to target. And Kenny Galladay, um, he just doesn't have that. Uh, he had that, uh, you know, that high profile name. You know, the name of a of a guy that you had to get. And uh, I don't know. He hasn't really. I don't think he's really really emerged as that. Uh, big receiver on the on the uh, Detroit Lions. I more efficient. The more efficient guy. The more guy that the guy that you can trust. Like not every week. I mean, he has he has down weeks, and but he doesn't have streaks of down weeks. Is Marvin Jones is just he's your steady Eddie on that uh, Detroit Lions. I would actually I would actually prefer um, Marvin Jones on that team as a as a WR two than than just diving for. Uh, um, I'd rather I'd rather target down the list for for a Marvin Jones than I would uh, target higher for for Kenny Galladay. I'd rather have. I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, for you know to fill out your roster, Marvin Jones is a better fill than 
picking your number one receiver is Kenny Galladay. I, I really don't know. Um, I didn't know that he was. Uh, um, you think he might test the free market? They're not. Did they not extend his contract? Or? Nope, he does not have a contract yet. Hmm, interesting. So, yep, Galladay can end up wherever. Um, but wherever he goes, he's he's a number one. It's a matter of where and what his ceiling is going to be. Even this year, playing through through injuries, he had either 100 yards or a touchdown in all of four of his games that he finished. Uh, he did leave the Week 8 game against the Colts, uh, four targets, uh, no catches because he got hurt uh, with the hip injury. But uh, after missing the first two weeks, played four games again, uh, and either a touchdown or 100 yards in both. Wherever he goes, he'll be good. Uh, he is, you know, a wide receiver one, like maybe a low end one, but yeah. his ceiling is going to be, his ceiling is going to be determined by wherever he goes. Yeah. If he goes to somewhere with even a competent QB, um, he's, he's going to be fine. Uh, I, I, I'd have him as my wide receiver one, no problem. Oh, and well, yes, I guess again, yeah, as you say, uh, depending on where he lands. Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. All right. Moving on. Uh, well, we'll stick with the wide receivers for now. I'll skip ahead of this one topic mm. here. Uh, Keenan Allen, uh, still a little bit of uncertainty on his uh, on his availability and what he's going to do this week. Of course, he was limited, uh, truly limited last week mm. uh, on Thursday against the Raiders with a hamstring injury. Despite uh, yelling into the camera not to sit him, uh, fantasy owners forever turning against Keenan Allen for that one. But, oh. I, can, uh, I you know I didn't week, I didn't see any Twitter feeds where they pretty uh, how did the no how, I, how did Twitter it react was just a lot of <laughs> it's normal fantasy football Twitter everybody's getting mad at at nothing you know everybody's <laughs> getting mad at a fake game but it was um, but he but he did play decoy we know that for a fact yeah well I mean hamstring like soft tissue injury on a short week with limited practice come on now. Like yeah. if you started him, if you started him because the player himself yelled into the camera, "Don't sit me." That's your own fault. Don't blame the player. No, well, I guess not. But I mean, you kind of think that uh, you you just don't expect him. If he's out there, he's playing, and you don't expect him to be a decoy mostly for the most part, which he was. I mean, uh, I think Stafford tried to get him the ball once for a for a touchdown score just to save the fantasy day, which didn't didn't quite work out. But uh, apart from not Stafford. Um, uh, Herbert, so that didn't quite. Still got Galladay on the brain, but, uh, um, but yeah, Keenan Allen. Um, yeah, I don't think you can start him. I think you're right about this. The soft tissue issue, soft tissue issue, and uh, I think there's that. You know, I think I think you can. I think you're best off if you're in the final and you owned him somehow, and, and, he, and he came through. You, uh, I think you gotta. I think you gotta sit him and go with your plan. Uh, it's it's just not worth it. At least that's what yeah. I feel about it. I mean, it de- obviously it depends who your other options are um, and yeah. what what Allen does in practice for the rest of the week. As of right now, he was held out of Tuesday's practice, so it's not uh, it's not a great start to his week. It's not you know a great sign. But if he, it's against Denver, if he does play. Um, yeah. And you know your other your other options are kind of iffy at best. I think you do have to put him in there. Yeah, uh, that, you see, that's the problem. They're playing Denver, and it's a good matchup. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. I mean, Denver it? just got ripped apart by uh, by Josh Allen. So, I and think, not only that, there's uh, a revenge factor too because Denver came back against uh, the Chargers uh, earlier in the season. Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. So, yep. so there's a bit of revenge factor going on there, and they're playing in. Uh, SoFi Stadium, I believe. So they got home field as well. And, you know. Yep. So it's it, and also Allen is eight yards away from a thousand yard season. So I mean, he's gonna play. It's just a matter of how much they'll have him out there. Yeah. Awesome stuff. All right. Uh, now to the running backs. Um, Ronald Jones. He had minor finger surgery last week and was placed on the COVID list. Uh, for a close contact, I believe. I don't think he has it. Um, but there hasn't been much on his status going into week 16. Uh, if you're a Ronald Jones owner and you don't have uh, Leonard Fournette, who had two touchdowns uh, in week 15, what are you doing with your running back? Um, you've got to pick up, you're going to have to pick up something. If you don't have Leonard Fournette, then you can't, obviously, you know, you can't, there's, there's nobody else down the list. Uh, Keisha, oh, I lied. He's expected to, he's expected to miss week 16. Excuse me. Oh, so he's, he's definitely out for now. Yeah. yeah. So, well, he, he's not definitely out. He's just, the Tampa Bay Times reported that he's expected to miss week 16, which oh, okay. makes sense. The Bucks are just playing for positioning right now. Um, yeah, I don't think they're, they can and, move and, up and or have, down. And they have the Lions, so I think they should be fine. Yeah, they're just they're just playing for a better uh, wild card spot, right? Yeah. So, yeah. They, they, so I think the uh, 
I think, yeah, Jones probably sits. Fournette takes the, the reins against the Lions, and then Jones probably comes back against the Falcons in Week 17. I really don't know who people can pick up off the waiver wire right now. I haven't checked, but there's, I mean, there's really no running back you can get unless Salvin Ahmed is still out there, which is very possible because a lot of people. Didn't He's only twenty-three percent owned. Uh, yeah. As of when I wrote the waiver wire thing yesterday, yeah. So he's he's uh, available, but oh. Ahmed, uh, Sony Michelle is going to be the lead guy against Buffalo. Right. Um, I wouldn't touch him. That's an option. I, eh, I mean, you know, New England's going to run, Like you know the Patriots have to run the ball, and Michelle's had Belichick's trust before. So again, if Jones is hurt and your backup is you know somebody that's not good, then Michelle, you know he's going to get double digit carries for sure. It's just a matter of how much you trust him. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I don't know. Or, I mean, you just don't know what the Patriots are. It could be James White, you know. So James I, White will never get 10, 10 carries. He'll get some like passing out of the backfield, but Michelle will get the bulk of carries yeah, if Damian Harris is still up, for Burke, sure. Burkhead is out, isn't he? Yep, towards ACL. That's right. Yeah, Burkhead's gone ages ago. So yeah, you're right. I guess I guess I really, really, when it comes to Sony Michelle, it's, it's I think that's catching lightning in a bottle. Really, I'd rather have someone like someone at Ahmed that Ahmed that you you know is going to get the ball and you know is going to get the carries. Um, well, Gaskin might come back. They haven't confirmed it, but Gaskin might come back, which uh, would obviously be an issue. It could be an issue, but Ahmed has been so effective. I mean, I've seen him in two games, and well, to be fair, Gaskin has been all right. Actually, that offensive line is uh, is doing a bang up job for these uh, for the for the running backs, and that's why the uh, the Dolphins are you know they're really competing this year. This is I mean, and they didn't seem like they were a team that were ready to compete. I mean, you, they brought in Tua halfway through the season. Didn't look like they were really. Um, it seemed like they were just testing the waters, and they find themselves in playoff contention. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's, it seems kind of weird, their playoff contention uh, thing, uh, how, how it came about. It just seemed to come almost by accident because, I mean, it, I mean they always played hard and everything, but because um, everything was humming when Fitzpatrick was in, and then they decided to uh, bring in Tua just out of the blue and not wait for uh, Fitzpatrick to flop, I guess. But um, but no, it's, just, it's it's kind of interesting. But yeah, they got a good they got a good team there, and I'm I'm starting to uh, I think there's a good trust in in Tua right now as well because Tua can run. Tua's got yeah, good wheels. I mean, he, his decision making was um, pretty good against the Pats. You can see him kind of learning and uh, making better decisions as the game went on, uh, especially after that first interception. Yeah, meteoric uh, he, growth. Uh, I'm seeing yep. fast growth out of him. Yep, he's he's going to be good. Um, and the Dolphins' defense is very good as well. Their secondary is great. Xavier Howard is the top-ranked uh, cornerback this year. He's been extremely, you know, productive. Uh, and the defense is going to help. And now that Brian Flores knows he can run the ball, uh, Dolphins could make some noise. Yeah. I don't know. Did you think that? Like, I mean, I know we only saw Burrow for a short time, but do you feel that? Don't you think? Um, to his growth, I know it's two different teams and <coughs> two different offensive lines. You know, two different uh, teams of pass protection. Um, I think that to his growth looks a little bit better than Burroughs. I think uh, in, in I think the game, to have put in better situations, uh, as you said. Um, it's a far better offensive line in Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a reason Burrow was taken uh, first overall, and there's a reason the Bengals were in that position first overall. Um, yeah. I believe the Dolphins pick wasn't even their own, was it? Uh, not sure. I'd have that was the Steelers that. pick, wasn't it? The, the fifth overall, that was the Steelers <coughs> pick. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or am I being dumb? Anyways. No, I don't um, know. I can't remember. But uh... Either way, um, yeah, the... The Dolphins, they put Tua in much better situations. Uh, their offensive line is good. The defense is good. Burrow, uh, at the time, was basically the entire team uh, with Joe Mixon out. You know, Giovanni Bernard is Gio Bernard. Uh, yeah. He's a good, you know, pass-catching pass, pass catching guy, but he's not... Look great last not a guy night. To lead a, not a guy to lead a running game. Uh, Burrow's put in some bad situations. Obviously, the offensive line was kind of trash. Uh, it got him hurt. But he, he looked good as well, uh, as much as he could learn and grow, having to throw it 45, 50 times a game to keep the Cincinnati uh, in the game. And yep. hopefully when he comes back, the Bengals will have invested in some offensive linemen because it's brutal right now for Burrow. Yeah, it is. And uh, I think, you know, the the happiest guy who's smiling in the sunshine, who who just uh, 
uh, laughed all the way to the bank is Justin Herbert. I mean, he he just he landed in a perfect spot. The 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 only problem the Chargers have to do deal with is that everything seems to be working on offense, but they their defense sucks. <laughs> they keep, I mean, Justin Herbert uh, could win a lot of games for them if teams wouldn't keep coming back on them. Teams keep coming back, and there's just Herbert puts up the points, but the defense doesn't stop the other team. So I mean, this is why you know you had a team like Denver. You know, that they got to, you know, there's this revenge game. I mean, Denver came back on them. That was a bad loss. So they've had, they've had a lot of bad losses where Herbert has, uh, I will say this though about Herbert. He is, he's pretty good at, uh, building up a lead, but, uh, and maybe he should be able to hold the lead a little better by, I don't know, he seems to slow down a little bit after the second half. I don't know what, if that's true. I'd have to check his, I'd have to check the splits on, uh, his statistics for, uh, second half scoring, but I, I'm pretty sure just, just going by, you know, my intuition, I, I, I feel that, uh, his second half production doesn't, never matches his first half production. I don't know what the splits are on that, but don't look it up. It's, it's too much of a hassle. It's something you have to, but, uh, I don't check the splits very often, but I think that's a split that I'd be very interested to see. Anyways. Uh, could we pause? Could we, uh, could we hit a pause here? I said take like a 30 second break. Sure. So I'll just, I'll just jump right in. We'll talk about Mostert. All right. Or Kittle. Kittle. Okay. Shoot. Ready. Uh, moving on here. Uh, George Kittle uh, has a chance to return. He's been uh, practicing. Place still uh, was designated to return from IR, I believe. Um, 49ers are out of the playoff race. Uh, is it worth the Niners bringing Kittle back in? Obviously, if he's playing, uh, you're going to use him. But is is it even likely he's going to start uh, in time or practice enough in time for Week 16? I think it is, but then again, I'm kind of wondering. I always worry about this, about teams that are out of the playoff chase and a guy coming off injury. Um, how much, uh, are they gonna, is he just gonna, are they just gonna go with the regular workload? Are they gonna come, are, are we gonna see George Kittle light? Um, not to the extent of like what we saw with, uh, Keenan Allen, not that kind of light, but, but where, um, the guys that have been already playing like Brandon Ayuk and stuff, um, I think they, I think they balance it out. I mean, he could go in and get a, get a touchdown and a score. So it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. But I, um, whether or not he gets the full regular, what he usually gets workload is, is kind of a question mark. I think you start him. If he's playing, you start him, but you temper expectations based on, um, the fact that what I just mentioned, being out of the playoff race and, and loading him up, loading him up with a regular, uh, when they're playing out the string, it's, is it really worth it? You know, so temper expectations, but you start him for sure. Yep. Uh, if Kittle plays, you have to start him. Uh, yep. Tight end is just that bad. Yeah. But uh, stick with the sticking with the 49ers. Uh, Raheem Mostert will be out for the rest of the season. Went on IR with what is his third high ankle sprain of the year on the same ankle. Uh, very clearly, he keeps coming back a little early, and it's affecting his ability to stay healthy. Yeah. Uh, so moving forward, it's going to be Jeff Wilson and Jerick McKinnon. Based on this past week's game, I think Wilson is the guy you want to have, not McKinnon. Um, Definitely. Yeah, uh, Wilson. He's uh, he's going to score a touchdown. Uh, he has his games. He's obviously good in the red zone. They've already used him in the red zone, um, even with everybody healthy. And now that uh, he's the lead guy, he's of course going to get the red zone touches. Uh, McKinnon, just a deep league PPR guy, I would say. Uh, his touches are going to be a little inconsistent, but yeah, uh, Wilson's the guy. I, yeah, I don't know about Tevin Coleman either. I I, I don't know his status, but. Um, who knows? I mean, but Jeff Wilson, yeah, if you got him and you start him, I mean, the, he's he's another option if you uh, if Ronald Jones is not available, go go get Jeff Wilson if he's available. Um, he might be. He might. Yeah, I'm, well, he's fifty fifty four percent owned in Yahoo, so I'm assuming the other forty percent, the other forty six percent of leagues are just not paying attention. Yeah, just yeah, check your waivers, see if he's around. Yeah. But don't Tevin Pullman played last week. He only had three carries. I think he's out of the uh, out of the equation here. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yep. All right. And uh, last bit of news, not really fantasy relevant, but Dwayne Haskins once again showing that he's not a super smart human being. <laughs> uh, just uh, defying the COVID protocols, going uh, seen maskless at a strip club. You know, putting the team in danger, putting himself in danger. Um, he's looking at some losing some salary and a suspension. Washington is going to move on from Haskins, right? Like, there's there's no way they can continue rostering this 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 player. Uh, 
and seeing it as a positive because he's, you know, not a good quarterback. And he also seems to be not the smartest human putting the rest of the team in danger. Yeah, it it, it boggles your mind. I mean, you see these guys who, who have careers and then they throw away, you know, we saw it, we saw it with Manziel, you know, it, Manziel is going to live with regret for the rest of his life that he was such a stupid kid, you know. And because he was, he, well, well, you know, Manzali did a lot of stupid off the field things, just like Haskins is doing here. I mean, it's a different thing. I mean, this is a little more serious because it kind of can affect the football team in general because you're not wearing a mask at a, you know, at a bar, and you're just. I don't even know why the bar has even got bars or what well, places with bars, but you know that kind of thing. So I don't know. This is, you know. Uh, it's just going to be uh, one of these things where career reg- he's going to have career regrets. I mean, Haskins, you know, he might not be a good quarterback, but there are, there are jobs for um, less than good quarterbacks that who, who actually make a living in the NFL, a good living. You know, I mean, look at RG3. I mean, RG3 is not the greatest quarterback. We all know that. But he gets a, he gets a decent backup job. You know, look at, you know, Ryan Finley, look how, you know, he's getting in some playing time with uh, the Bengals and he played really well and he gets to show his, show his wares and he's always going to be a, you know, he's trying hard to be uh, an NFL quarterback and uh, backup role is, a, you know, it's kind of a prestige job I mean, in, in this world. Uh, in the football world, I mean, a backup quarterback in the in the NFL is better than a starting quarterback in the CFL, right? So, uh, I would say, I think, I think, I think most backup quarterbacks in the NFL get more money than a, than a starting quarterback in the CFL. So, you know, like so, Haskins is yeah, but your your assumption here is that Dwayne Haskins is actually better than Ryan Finley and RG three. Um, from no. all accounts, he's he's really not. Uh, no, he's and not. I'm assuming RG three and Ryan Finley. Uh, are able to help the young quarterbacks ahead of them uh, with, you know, experience, words of wisdom, mentorship. Dwayne right. Haskins has none of that. No, no. He Dwayne doesn't. Haskins is not helping in QB room. No, like, but I, Dwayne I, Haskins is only in the NFL because he has physical talent, but the talent is not good enough in the NFL to overcome the rest of the crap that he does. So, no, well, he will not I'm, be a backup. No, he, no, he won't be a backup. But I mean, I mean, is he, who's better? Is he, is he better than McCarron or, uh, Say Geno Smith, or well, I guess Geno Smith is mentor. Scott, he's kind of at the mentoring level. Colt McCoy, you know, um, I can't think a few others. Uh, Blaine Gabbert, uh, you know, I mean, those guys are got, you know, well, Blaine Gabbert has has mentorship qualities, but not only that, Dwayne Haskins, you know, I mean, he's turning into, I mean, he's not even good for a camp arm now. I mean, people won't even, they won't even want him for a camp arm. You know, look at Nathan Peterman. I mean, this, this is the second character issue that Dwayne Haskins has that that's popped up around Haskins this season. It's not the first time this char- that his character issues have kind of come up oh, no. after the uh, the celebrating and the selfies, you know, in a loss or all that kind of stuff. And it's just well, that. I don't well, it's know, just like, so my it's, point is that he's throwing it away. I mean, if he could build on his yeah, skills, but you know? that's that's why he's not going to stay in the NFL because he just doesn't have that. You know that quality that's worth keeping around, even if you know you're not the most talented guy. You don't have that those other qualities that are they're going to endear you to team. That's right, and uh, coachability and things like that. I mean, this is why Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy tries hard. That's why he gets a backup job. And same with yeah. AJ McCarron. You know, like I mean, he's AJ McCarron's no great guy. He's got he's got the best looking wife probably in the NFL, but <laughs> I guess that's all that matters to him. Yep. All right. Uh, moving on now. As Catherine said, Webb. The oh, by the way, show. Catherine Webb. Have you ever seen her? Yeah, it's, she's all over TV whenever McCarran plays. <laughs> I know, it's great. Uh, uh, she's moving on gorgeous, now. As it's at the lady. top of the show, this one's going to be uh, this week's going to be a little bit different. As I said, we don't need uh, cha- it's championship week. Uh, most people probably aren't going to need waiver advice, so we're going to skip the waivers this week and just move on to uh, broader spectrum questions about uh, the draft process uh, and looking back at the year that was in fantasy. We'll have our award show at some point over the next month, but yeah, Kevin's got to be in on that. Yep. But for now, we'll have some you know pre-draft questions, players we missed, uh, and lo- a little bit looking forward to next year. So the first question we have here is. Um, you know what players did we target this year, but we're gonna gonna not target next year. Uh, Richard, you have three players here, so you can go ahead with a couple of them. All right, my first guy is uh, I'm gonna say oh, I'll start with a wide receiver, DJ Chark. I'm not. I kind of had him on a target list. I would have. I he kind of escaped uh, the chat. It's a, it's a good thing too that he escaped my. Uh, 
Uh, he got drafted. I wasn't able to draft him because somebody else would get him. But I'm kind of glad he didn't. But he was a, he was definitely a target for me. I would have picked him. I, if if I had the opportunity, I would have picked up D- DJ Chark, and I would have been disappointed. Um, but he's definitely off uh, the target list. And even if the Jags get a little better, I'm... I'm still gonna shy away from DJ Chark. Um, I just don't feel that. I just don't feel there's a real true. I don't think he's a true number one. I thought that we thought he was gonna be like the true uh, uh, leader of the in the pecking order. That the pecking order seems a bit. Uh, it's something that's still in flux. The guy I think that I would target on the Jaguar is actually the Visco Chenault. I think he could emerge. I just don't think it's Chark. I really don't. But. Then again, it might not be Chenault either, but I'd rather uh, take someone like Chenault down the list than I would take uh, someone like DJ Chark high. And I don't see I don't see DJ Chark being on high on draft list next year. Um, yeah, I target him, but fortunately, he didn't land on any of my teams, but which was kind of lucky. Well, you're not going to target uh, Chark with Trevor Lawrence as his QB. Ooh, that's uh, oh, yeah, that, that'd that's be something right. I'd, I'd be super interested in. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. The Jags took over the top, <laughs> mm-hmm. the the top spot this weekend, didn't they? Yeah, I didn't consider that. I don't know. Trevor Lawrence, I don't know. It's a hit, the hippie. I don't know. Long these long haired quarterbacks. You see, almost that Herbert got a haircut. You know, it looks like a. <laughs> yes, Herbert got a haircut. Herbert got a haircut. No, he's no, he looks you know decent. Not these not these long haired hippies. That's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how uh, Trevor Lawrence does in the uh, NCAA playoffs. Uh, who are they playing again? Ohio State, are they? Yeah, I think it's Ohio State. Alabama's playing Notre Dame in the Rose Bowl. I think that's what it yeah. is. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, one of my guys, uh, early round guy, uh, Josh Jacobs. I really went after him uh, this year because I knew he was going to get most of the carries, and he has been uh, for the most part. And I thought that in his second year. Uh, Gruden would kind of involve him more in the passing game. Uh, he did not. And uh, it's tough to take your RB1 or RB2 in the second round when he's getting schemed out of games uh, so early because his team's defense is garbage. <laughs> um, it's really, it's a frustrating thing to see. So until, you know, the Raiders prove that they're going to give Jacobs the targets and they're going to, you know, put a defense around so they don't fall behind by 20 super early. Uh, it's too risky to take, you know, your second, third round guy who can sh- straight up not play in the second half because the team is down. So I yeah. like Jacobs as a player, but I'm not going to be taking him unless he falls. I didn't take him for the simple fact that I don't, don't, didn't trust the Raiders offense this year. I'm for, for the reasons that you just uh, pointed out. Uh, yeah. And not only that, it's, he's, the, the offense is the backfield offense at, at least you know they mix in guys too far too often they don't leave Jacobs in there enough I mean you see in Jalen Richard and Devontae Booker mixing in t- a little too much for for my liking um it's similar to uh, who's that other team that does a similar thing um that that annoys you when you know because every time you look on the field like where's Jacobs how come Jacobs isn't out there why 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 is he, you know what's what's Booker doing in the backfield you know it's sort of like it's frustrating when you see uh, a guy out there who shouldn't be there and uh, I found that with Jacobs a lot although I will say you know when Sip started his first game out of the shoot Jacobs looked like all right positive but I don't know just sort of the touches and snap counts just sort of dwindled away everyone stands so you're absolutely right yeah Jacobs I didn't target him myself but I can see people why people did uh my next guy is John o. Smith now I targeted him heavily I tried to get him everywhere good he um everything was going swimmingly while uh while the getting was good but uh I don't know what it was. I think uh, one of the receivers was uh, uh, wasn't wasn't playing, and uh, so it helped uh, Jonah Smith get a few more targets. And it seemed like earlier in the season, like Jonah Smith was a guy, and now I don't know. It seemed like in the late in the season, he's he slipped away, and I, I really thought he would be uh, up there with the tight end ones, like at least close to the elite, but. Uh, he turned out, uh, to fade off as the season went on. I don't know why, but, uh, why he got phased out of the offense 
to the degree that he was because he was like down he started getting down to like one to two targets a game and he was getting i mean i think this last game he got a few more targets and he put up some fantasy scores uh, points but i don't know he had guys like ferks are moving muscling in on a muscling in on the target share i don't know what happened but uh jonah smith yeah uh things started definitely tapering off a little bit too much i mean have you got another guy yeah, yeah. uh i got michael gallup oh, okay. um I was pretty in on Michael Gallup this year as a uh, you know wide receiver, low two, high three. Uh, he was very good to end last year, but C.D. Lamb is just uh, an incredible player, uh, really good talent, and immediately leapfrog Gallup on that depth chart. So Gallup super inconsistent now, even with Dak playing. And uh, yeah, nope, <laughs> not targeting Gallup next year unless uh, unless there's a trade or something in the works. But with the Cowboys, so long as Cooper and Lamb are there. Gallup's not going to be a big part of that offense. No, I don't see it. Uh, um, it's it's kind of hard to say when uh, when Dak gets back. It's yeah, I think when Dak gets back, it's C.D. Lamb, and uh, I think the actual real problem guy is uh, Amari Cooper. But who who targets Amari Cooper? Nobody ever targets Amari Cooper. Is just like, well, he's on the board still. Better take him, you know, <laughs> because if I don't if I don't scoop him, and actually Amari Cooper. Um, gives you good fantasy, uh, has good fantasy return, at least when Dak is in there. Dak still likes uh, Amari Cooper. And, uh, you know, he gets a gets a good share of fantasy points. But you're right, it's it's Lamb and Cooper. It, it, Gallup is, is the odd guy out. So, But on, I tell you one thing, Gallup, he's kind of like Galladay on another team. He would be... Uh, he he would get he would get good targets you know he would get to, he would get a good target share I think uh, Gallup is Gallup's a very talented receiver um, I've seen him make some fantastic catches uh, you know just really really I mean we're talking real WR one style catches and indeed um, Gallup was um, uh, was one of those uh, you know hype train guys and uh, I think. Gallup, if he ever does move to another team, um, he could have he could be one of those uh, post hype sleepers, you know. Yeah, I mean, he would have to move to another team first. Yeah, uh, and depending on the the uh, the offense he moves to, yeah. But as of right now, as the situation stands, if he stays with the Cowboys, yeah. I will not be targeting him. Nope, uh, can't, doesn't work on the Cowboys. Uh, my other guy is Aaron Jones. Uh, I'm. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I targeted Aaron Jones, but, uh, he had a, b- a few injuries, uh, in, so you didn't have him for, uh, a bit of the, in the early part of the season for a while. So you, so you were without him. And then when he came back, um, the balance of the offense, he, he wasn't getting the touchdowns. The touchdown regression was really regressed, <laughs> more regressed than you would expect. I mean, we kind of expected a touchdown regression, but we didn't expect it this much. And now I'm kind of wondering, hmm, he's not getting the he's not getting as many uh, pass catching opportunities as well from Aaron Rodgers. So the yeah, so the, the shine has gone off Aaron Jones uh, this year a little bit. Not a lot, not a not a not a not a big lot. You still you still want to get this guy on your team, but not as high as um, you might have drafted him this year. Uh, so this a bit of the shine has gone off uh, Aaron Jones, and I would. Uh, I would target others uh, ahead of him. I'm sad to say at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Aaron Jones is RB5 on the season. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you were expecting <laughs> to start the year, but Aaron Jones is RB5 in standard leagues. So... Oh, standard, right. Okay. Oh, he's R- he's RB- he's also RB5 in half PPR. So. Oh, okay. so he's done that well. He's come back that much. Yeah, he's the volume is up this year. He's he's not sco- he's not going to score like 18 touchdowns or whatever, but... Yeah, he's, it's the touchdown he's done regression. Well. It's just, it just seems like he's kind of off because the Packers will randomly take him out of games halfway through. Yeah, um, but he's done very well this year. Quite obviously, uh, RB five. Uh, so I disagree with you there, uh, Aaron Jones. As long as he's in a, as long as he's a good running back, um, he might not be in Green Bay next year. But as long as he goes to a semi decent offense, he's going to be very very valuable. Mm. Uh, well, that's it for question one. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next one. So a player that you uh, you missed the boat on early. So I assume you when you wrote the question, you meant like waiver picks that you missed. Uh, yeah, or a guy that uh, that I didn't draft late that I didn't have much confidence. I somebody else that I would have uh, would have picked like uh, I, some guy I should have picked instead of Christian Kirk or something like that. You know, 
I'm talking about guy, guys that down the list that I kind of missed the boat on. And uh, a guy that I should have given it. A guy, a guy I should have taken a chance on more than just going for a, you know, a sure thing. You know, that, that sort of thing. The question is, just a player that you missed the boat on, basically. And my guy that I missed the boat on is Corey Davis. I, 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 but I didn't expect it. Nobody did. Who could expect Corey Davis to? But, you know, people late in the draft, uh, people, you know, they pick up Corey Davis and, uh, you know, hit and hope. It's one of those hit and hope things. And uh, Corey Davis, um, he's great. Uh, you know, you're, you're starting Corey. I can't believe it, but you're starting Corey Davis every week. Matchup, r- regardless of the matchup, you're starting Corey Davis. I just, um, I, th- I think the reason is, is that uh, the presence of A.J. Brown has uh, has pulled some of the coverage off of him and uh, now he's getting opportunity and it's working it's working out like a charm and uh Corey Davis uh, yeah I missed the boat on him I I don't know why I did I should have thought I should have thought that AJ Brown was going to draw coverage and and it was going to open up Corey Davis a little more I but I didn't I don't know why I think I didn't think that way and uh my mistake my bad I should have uh I should have figured that one out I don't know about you but that's how I feel about it uh I mean I just didn't trust Corey Davis to start um I, I'm not super sorry I missed the boat on him. I mean, yeah, I am because he was a good producer, but that's one of those, you know, I didn't, after what, three three years of yes. kind of spotty production from him, I, I, I didn't want to take the leap again. I had done it for a couple of years. I didn't want to do it again. So yeah, it sucks I didn't, but I'm, I'm not too mad about missing about missing the Corey Davis one, honestly. Yeah, but it was uh, but it was kind of one of those logic things that you sort of just don't think about, like because because you, you can't stand him and, and what you've seen in the past that he you know he doesn't get targeted by other quarterbacks, and so you know Tannehill has finally settled in, and uh, which I might I might say too. Um, I think I might have might have missed the boat too on <laughs> Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> Ryan Tannehill's out of quite a few good games. Um, so, uh, very few duds. I haven't taken a look at his, his overall stats, but, uh, Tannehill but- had a, a little mid-season lull. Um, but he's been QB seven on the year. Yeah. So he's, it's Kyler, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Rogers, Wilson, Deshaun Watson, and then Tannehill. Um, so he's, it's not like he's came out of nowhere. He was ranked this highly at the end of last year, too, as a starter. Mm. Uh, people didn't really believe in him, but the Titans offense is, I believe, the highest scoring offense in the league. I think they scored one more point than, uh, than the Chiefs have over the course of the year. That's amazing. So that's an amazing stat. Yeah. You wouldn't guess that, would you? No. Um, Especially but, from a run first team. Yeah, the the Titans offense is, is good. They the average, yeah, them and the Chiefs both average thirty one point one, and I believe the Titans have uh, have scored one more point. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I'll go take a look at it. But yeah, Titans offense is good, and uh, because you have to sell to stop Derrick Henry, you can't not sell to stop Derrick Henry. And yeah. then Tannehill, all he has to do is be average. Uh, throw it to AJ Brown, throw it to uh, Corey Davis, John U. Smith, and yeah, there's nothing really you can do. That's why they're scoring so well. Yeah, um, the Chiefs have scored 435 points. The Titans have scored 436. The highest scoring offense in the league, <laughs> the Tennessee Titans. Unreal. I would never have guessed. I would have said the Chiefs immediately. But one point. I gotta more. thank Chris Sims for that one. That wasn't me. I heard on the on Chris Sims Unbuttoned podcast this morning. So that's. Uh, I'm not gonna take credit for fighting that one. No, it's a good one. It's a good one to pass along. Yeah. Uh, I guess my guy I missed the boat is uh, Chase Claypool. Uh, I know he's been a little inconsistent with the Steelers' offense dropping off of late, but uh, after his first couple of games, you can kind of see that he was a big play guy. Uh, He scored in his first game, I believe. And um, I thought about it, didn't do it, because I figured that, you know, Juju would pick it up, Deontay Johnson was there. Uh, I figured Claypool was behind James Washington as well. Um, And then, of course, when he scored four touchdowns in Week 5, that all just went out the window. <laughs> um, yeah. And I lost, I think I tried to bid like $35 on him and I got outbid by a dollar. Somebody put bid 36. Ooh. So missed the boat there. Um, and yeah, it's, it sucks. I got to keep my money and spend it on absolutely nothing as the season went on, but you know how it goes. Uh, so I'm disappointed that I could have had Claypool for free in between weeks one and four. Didn't do it. And I was stuck with a revolving door of waiver wire receivers all year long. 
Yeah. There's some other guys, too, that I would like to, some honorable mentions. Uh, Gus Edwards would be a guy that I kind of missed the boat on. I should, he would have been a, he was, he's a handy bench uh, running back to have for the bye weeks and stuff. I, I would have really liked to have a guy, I really like to have a guy like Gus Edwards on my team. Just, you know, on my bench or something to, uh, you know, for bye weeks and stuff or or even in, in a good matchup. I mean, he's pretty solid. He's had a pretty solid year like as a, as a running back and uh, getting lots of carries. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, so th- I'll put him as an honorable mention just to, he's just kind of coming off the top of my head there. But, uh, yeah, t- uh, guys like him, they're, they're good to have on your bench, those guys. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next question, question three. Name a player that you dropped uh, way too early. Who you got? <sighs> Robert Tonyan. I gave up on Robert Tonyan because he had, well, I felt like the uh, touchdown streak was ending and I, uh, and this was in our F6 P league. I dropped him, and I you know, it was the stupidest thing I ever did. Why did I drop him? Well, I just didn't. I just didn't want to hang on to him. I found him hard to trust after that. But I don't know. Rogers keeps going to him again, and uh, and he's picked it up. And he's a good guy to have for uh, fantasy playoffs. And I would like to I'd definitely like to have him. Now, granted, I've managed to patch things up with other guys like Logan Thomas and and. Uh, no offense. <laughs> you dropped him. And then he... You're in the finals. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter, but it mattered at the time. And it was hilarious at the time. It was hilarious at the time. Yeah, good. yeah you had a good laugh at that. But uh, I did the same thing with Tanyan. Um, I added him after his three touchdown games, spent some big, uh, big budget on him. He proceeded to put up no touchdowns in the next five weeks. Uh, 25, 32, 79, 5, and 33 yards. Dropped him after a 33-yard game. I was like, ah, nah. It was just a flash in the pan. And yep. then the touchdown streak started. So, you know, that sucked. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, and I've been moving forward with, with Hurst uh, and Goddard. But Goddard was still hurt at the time. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not been great. Yet. I hate dropping guys that, that go off after, you know, right, especially if it's the next week. And because uh, somebody, because as soon as I dropped on you, he's picked up right away. And I thought, huh, go ahead. If you, you know, have fun. And they do. <laughs> Always happens. So you got. Who else? Uh, me, my guy I dropped early is Brandon Cooks. Um, I didn't, this is a shallower league, so I'm more okay with this, but I did drop him. Uh, the beginning of the year with Bill O'Brien, he was looking not good. Uh, you know, he had the zero yard game in week four, and then, you know, uh, weeks one and three, he put up less than 25 yards. He wasn't getting targets. Um, yeah, so I, I cut bait, and then... You know, Bill O'Brien got fired and Cooks immediately jumped up and looked like the receiver he had been for, you know, the last last four or five years. Um, you know, I that that's on me. I should have been a little bit more patient with that considering he had faced Baltimore and Pittsburgh, uh, a couple of really good defenses. So Yeah. That that's on me, but also I didn't really see Bill O'Brien getting fired that early considering that he had made all those moves to put himself in that position. But right. yeah, Brandon Cooks dro- dropped him a little early and I'm like, not, I won't wait, be afraid to take him next year. Let, let me guess, you dropped him after the Minnesota game where he got nothing. A 94% snap count, and he got three targets and no catches. And then he goes yeah. off against Jacksonville, and then he, then the rest is history. Yeah, he's definitely a good uh, flex uh, WR3 guy. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Good guy to have on your bench there. Uh, my guy that I dropped way too early was Naheem Hines. Hines uh, took a while. He started off like a house on fire. Then I then I put him in the next week and uh, he turned out crap. Let me just take a look at his stats after find out exactly when I dropped him. I dropped him right around I think I dropped him around week six. And then one of our other guys picked him up in his league and then he proceeded to, to uh put up nearly twenty fantasy points and then he had a, then he had a down game, then he was up again to twenty six fantasy points and six and thirteen fifty, then ten, nine, six, four. I mean, this is a guy you can uh He's, uh, he's, again, this is a guy I wish I had on my bench that I threw away. A guy that could be, you know, a handy, um, guy to have on my bench. Kind of similar to what I was saying about Gus Edwards. Uh, a guy that, a guy that can go off on a game. Like, you can throw him out there and, uh, he's kind of a hit and hope guy, but he's more hope than hit more often than not in that sense. 
You know, kind of like uh, Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards can fly in for a touchdown at any given time. And that's the same with Naheem Hines. He can have, you know, fly in with a good game. I dropped him way too early. I dropped I dropped uh, Naheem Hines. I should have held on to him a little bit longer, I think. So, yeah, bit of a mistake. I mean, that there. Colts backfield was a mess. Uh, was a mess for quite a bit. So, I can't really you know, blame but you. But I, yeah, but I hate giving up guys that are... That, 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 that I hate giving up good players that, that fill up your bench. Like, he's a good player to have on the bench. Bench, you know, is when you need them. These are, you know, that's fair. Uh, it's also a good segue uh, talking about the Colts backfield. Uh, question five or question four here. Uh, what player was most frustrating to own, but you couldn't drop him? Uh, mine is Jonathan Taylor. Right. Obviously, uh, this is a keeper league, so I was there was obviously no thought of dropping him. Um, right. But uh, incredibly frustrating keeper league. I took him in the first, and having him, you know, not get the touches and then not do a lot with the touches to start the year. Uh, incredibly frustrating considering, you know, how highly touted he was and how good the, the Colts offensive line uh, was supposed to be. But uh, obviously it paid off. Uh, look, has looked extremely good the last four weeks. Uh, didn't quite get as many touches as I thought he would against the Texans, uh, considering how bad their run defense is. Um, but that's okay. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is looking like the, you know, that guy that's going to be first rounder or a borderline first rounder next year anyways. And yeah, it paid off, despite how frustrating the first, what, nine weeks of the season were <laughs> as, a, as a JT owner? I think you're right. I think uh, Jonathan Taylor is definitely a, a – uh, I think he's well into the first round. I think you can uh, – I would say – I would say you could you could even take him at uh, uh, seven or eight. I think you would be. I think you you could be quite comfortable taking him there. Uh, right now he's RB ten. So ahead of him, you're looking at say McCaffrey, Cook, Henry, Kamara, probably Jones, depending on where he ends up. Uh, Barkley, maybe if he you know if he looks good in camp. Uh, Adams, Tyreek, uh, maybe Michael Thomas, depending on how, you know, Breeze looks to end the year. Things like that. Uh, maybe, maybe Metcalf, because I know Metcalf fans, uh, like yourself, they're quite rabid over DK. And, well, <laughs> well he's awesome. <laughs> Y'all like your DK. Uh, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins, maybe, because he, he's played pretty well. And as, as Kyler continues to improve, then Hopkins will play well as well. Um, but yeah, I, I'm Taylor like 10, 10 to 12 is where he's probably going to end up going. Uh, yeah, I could see, you know, you mentioned DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf could be one of the one of the receivers that breaks up the uh, string of running backs in the first round. Well, I think Adams and Hill are going to be the, uh, are going to yeah. be like 6, 7 around the area that yeah. Michael Thomas was this year. Yeah, and so a DK could easily go in the first round as well. Later. Don't forget later Nick Chubb. Him. And Nick Chubb, yeah, Chubb's a, he's a good Chubb player. Is so good. He is. He's a good player to have. He's he's like uh, Derrick Henry. He's a good player to have at this time of year. Yep. Excellent. And he's fresh, right? He took those whatever four weeks off with the with the with the knee injury. He did. Coming that was unfortunate. Fresh. He's not, you know, he's not beat up or anything like that. Yeah. So uh, my guy that. Uh... That uh, it's frustrating to own, but you can't drop them. And it's really not his fault. I mean, if you don't have the IR slot, or if you just have one IR slot and you've got to hold it for this guy, you got to you got one IR slot and you got to hold it for this guy, John Brown. John Brown, you can't really drop him because if he comes back, he's going to do well. And I guess this is why I was. I think last week I was trying to say that um, uh, this uh, who was the uh, not Isaiah McKenzie, who was the other Bills guy that that was starting to emerge. Yeah. Gabriel Davis. Gabriel Davis, you know, and I was trying to I was trying to talk myself into Gabriel Davis being better than John Brown. John Brown actually being better because he, there are pardon me, Gabriel Davis being better because he's simply on the field. But that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. You want a guy who's on the field. And John Brown, if he's taking up your IR spot all all year, there's other guys you gotta drop in order to keep John Brown. Or if you don't have an IR spot, it's even worse. You gotta hold. You can't drop because if John Brown gets dropped, somebody else is somebody else who uh, has room for a guy like John Brown can hold him. You know, and and so John Brown, year in year out, he's a frustrating guy to own. And the fact that he's not really, you know, he's obviously not the number one. It's it's Diggs. It's it's you know he's 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 not that important to keep. 
So, I don't know, in shallow leagues, in shallow leagues, yeah, sure, just drop, no problem. But in, you know, 12 to 14 leagues, you can't really, you know, 12 to 14 team leagues, you can't drop John Brown. So he's, he's, he's frustrating. I think you can say that for a lot of the guys like Galladay, I think, too. And I guess, you know, Michael Thomas, you, you can't drop these guys, these, these injured guys and that are taking up, uh, you know, a valuable. So most leagues, I know that uh, in our league, they expanded because of COVID, they expanded our our IR slots. But, you know, that's going to go back to one slot next year. And what, that one IR slot is kind of an important slot. So, <coughs> so that's my, that's my, he's a bit of my bugaboo this year. John Brown bugs me. I'm not, For I'm sure. not targeting him. Not targeting him because I don't want to keep him. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as we've been doing, uh, for the last couple of questions here. Looking ahead to next year, uh, we talked about the first round already. Who's your number one? Obviously, there are a few. We talked about this before the show. Three main running backs in the conversation for number one. Yeah. Uh, but who do you have going number one? Well, you know what? The way I feel is that uh, I would think like <coughs> like long term. Like I look at I look at Chubb and Derrick Henry as being you know practically indestructible. Well, especially Henry. And he's like Mr. December as well. He's doing it again. And you think, well, this is a guy you got to have. And he's had a good year. And and once again, he's 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 going to be the uh, rushing company. Oh, by the way, speaking of Henry, how's his, uh, how's his rushing totals? Is he going to catch? Uh, uh... No, I messed up the math last week. Uh, as as I mentioned right after I did the math, uh, he needed to average 156 yards. Yeah, but he got uh, 100. Game. But he got a what? He got 146 this, this week, right? So yeah, so so he he still needs like 160 some yards per over the last two games to hit 2,000 yards. So yeah. I yes. mean, yeah, he's got he's got some nice matchups coming up, like. The, if what, he, the but Packers, if he, yeah, the I Packers know. this week. So, mm-hmm. and then after is the Texans. So, if they, if if Rabel really wanted Henry to to you know hit two thousand or or you know catch Eric Dickerson, he could just give him thirty carries in each of these games, and he could he could run for you know two hundred some yards in each one, especially against Houston. Uh, right. Because he already ran for two twelve against them earlier this year. Well, you gotta so... hope. You gotta hope the Colts keep winning so that they have to keep. So they have to play hard in Week Seventeen. Yeah, that's another thing, right? So. So they don't have to rest. And of course, them. that that brings it in, right? You know, Derrick Henry so consistent. You know exactly what you're getting with Derrick Henry. Yeah, doesn't get hurt. Um, you know he's going to get goal line. Well, you don't know he's going to go get goal line touches because Tannehill called his own number on the goal line twice this past weekend. That's right. But I think we both agree that uh, it's got to be Christian McCaffrey. I mean, yes. you you explained it before the uh, before the pod today that it was uh, you know. That it was j- his his production, even just in the four games that he was in there full time, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, so as I I like I said, like you said before the podcast, um, I looked it up. He McCaffrey's only played three games, um, but he's RB fifty in just three games of production. He's RB fifty. Uh, so he's ahead of you know Philip Lindsay, Joshua Kelly, Le'Veon Bell. All these guys, he's only played three games. Uh, he's produced, what, 20, 32, 22, and 27 or something crazy like that in those games. Like, yeah. if he's healthy, he's producing. Uh, you know he's going to get the targets. You know he's going to get 90% of the snaps. I don't, like, as long as Camp comes out and he's healthy, I think McCaffrey's that. McCaffrey's number one for sure. Uh, are we doing moving on up like who was playoff worthy or something? I don't know what we're doing. I, I didn't put anybody uh, in for that. We I have, mean, how are we doing for time? Uh, I haven't been timing it, but uh, we've, we're, we're, we're getting... we've been on the call for, for an hour and 20 already. So yeah, we're... right. Yeah. We're getting why don't we just do Mr. Unlimited and, uh, and wrap it. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mr. Unlimited. You know who I'd like to pick for Mr. Unlimited, but they lost was Jalen Hurts, but I can't pick Jalen Hurts. <laughs> I, I can't, I, I would love, I would love to pick Jalen Hurts for Mr. Unlimited. I, I mean, you don't if... know how much I would love to pick him. They if lost. Dallas Goddard had caught one of his three Hail Mary attempts, then he might have been Mr. Unlimited. Yeah, he might have. So I got to, I got to, uh, you know, I got to fish Goddard around had for three him. chances in the end zone. I know. He's just total time. Um, yeah. Wentz is, I think that that performance is like pushed, uh, it's pushed, uh, Carson Wentz out the door. Carson oh, Wentz yes, is out definitely. the door. Definitely. That, that performance, it's, it's, it's done it right. So, anyways, I gotta pick somebody else. So, if you've got somebody ahead of me, you can go ahead and make your nomination. But uh, I've gotta yeah, go find somebody. Uh, I'm gonna go Kyler Murray. Uh, I know he was outscored 
ever so slightly by Josh Allen and Ryan Tannehill. But I'm going Kyler because this was his, I guess, his comeback game uh, after weeks of just awful performances starting uh, in Seattle. And then he got hurt in New England with the shoulder injury and he wasn't running. He wasn't looking good. Uh, came back against the Eagles, who are a half decent defense, um, 406 yards, uh, three touchdowns, and then ran in for another touchdown. Uh, he looks healthy. His throwing motion is back to normal. And yeah. uh, the entire Cardinals offense just hit another level because their quarterback could do the things that he's used to doing. Yeah. Um, I know he was outscored by two other guys, but I'm going to go with Kyler just because it was a it was an exciting comeback. And he threw for 400 yards. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um David Montgomery topped the board, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't pick him, but I, I would actually, you know, I'd like to give Mr. Montgomery is also a good pick. Yeah. Montgomery's a good pick too. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's well deserving because he's, he's come along and, uh, and he's coming on just like the other guys. Uh, he's coming on strong at the end of the fantasy season for, for fantasy players. Um, he's just, he's doing an awesome job, but you know who I would pick? I would actually pick Tony Pollard as Mr. Unlimited because he came in like, I, this was just like, I don't think he knew he was going to be the starter. I think this was a game, game time decision for Ezekiel Elliott. And he just came in on a game time decision. And, uh, Tony Pollard, uh, and, uh, he scored big time. 28, 28 fantasy points. Um, uh, just, he ripped, he was ripping runs left and right, like in the style of Zeke, you know. The guy in, I mean, the guy right now, the way Zeke is playing right now. There's obviously something not right with Zeke, and you could obviously see that's why Zeke has been out, and he's been maybe he's been hiding it all these weeks. I don't know, but uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that offensive line, and there's and Tony Pollard was you know ripping off runs left and right. So I'm gonna nominate Tony Pollard. Uh, so we gotta we gotta decide on this. So you you say Kyler Murray, uh, four thirty four points. Let me take a look at those stats again. So so what do you think of Tony Pollard? For, uh, I mean, Pollard well, I played extremely up. well, um, showing why he was one of the, you know, the stronger handcuffs for those that like to do that. Uh, extremely talented, nine targets, which I was not expecting out of uh, out of out of Pollard, but he played very well. Uh, looked shifty, looked fast. Uh, his second touchdown was a great run where he escaped like three guys who who had him by the had him by the jersey. It was a great run, and uh, well, I'm definitely not drafting Zeke uh, <laughs> in the first <laughs> round anymore. No. Yeah, Zeke's fallen out. That's an interesting question. Who, uh, which of the running backs that were uh, in the top three are you not draft? Oh, it, it, Zeke. I, I would. Uh, I don't know. Where well, do you put I, Zeke? I would. I would. I would take Saquon because his injuries were two freak injuries. It wasn't like again. It wasn't. Oh, I pulled a hamstring. Oh, like my my back is sore kind of thing. This was he tore his knee to shreds. You know, it's a one time uh, a one time event. Yeah. Not, is not like Zeke, who who just looks slow and is fumbling like crazy, and his backup is super good. So, like Wayne, Wayne Gallman doesn't scare me taking touches from Barkley, but Zeke's issues with fumbles and you know the the elusiveness is kind of a little bit gone. And Pollard looking so good that worries me a little bit. And he had the nerve to hold out last year. <laughs> the nerve of that guy! Him with his him with his scooping his mo. You don't know, he doesn't do that anymore. He doesn't. He doesn't like. Uh, like starts feeding himself with a spoon. Does that thing when he gets a first down. He has a little thing that he does. He's a. I don't know. I've never liked Zeke Elliott. I've never liked his attitude. But I don't know. I don't know. Jerry Jones. He, he seems to like these players with attitude. Uh, can I? Um. But uh. uh but uh, I haven't played the thing yet. So we got to do this. Mister Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. So who's it gonna be? Are you gonna cave and say? Tony Pollard? Or are you going to say, I, I really think it should be. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, I'm looking at the sheet here, and it says that, hey, you, you deleted it. It said that you were going to be the judge. It says I was going to be the judge. Between, yeah, if you and Kevin were going to be here, I would. Be, it would have been my turn to uh, pick you, you right, and well, Kevin. Would have I, I will give it to Pollard just because he hasn't won one yet. Uh, right. No, Kyle has it either because we took it away and gave it to, uh, and gave it to uh, no, no, we gave it to Kyler, didn't we? No, we gave it to Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we did. did. We nope. did give it to Kyler. Yeah. We, we gave it to Kyler. All right, all right. We gave it to Kyler. I'll I'll give it to Pollard. He hasn't won one yet. Played super yeah. well in a shockingly exciting game. <laughs> and a game Revenge time decision game. too. Game time decision, don't forget. Yeah. 
Game so, time yeah, decision. I'll give it to I'll, I'll give it to Pollard. Yeah, Pollard. Pollard is the man, and he's Mr. Unlimited. Mr. Unlimited. You gotta be unlimited. You gotta be. You just gotta be. Um, there's something else I want to talk about, too. Uh, and this is kind of because we're getting into final thoughts now. Um, I want to talk about Des Bryant. I saw something in Des Bryant, like... He was so happy that he got a touchdown last weekend. I, I could just feel the enthusiasm, and, and I could feel that the, the, the Ravens were so happy for him that he's back. He hadn't caught a touchdown since 2017 in the NFL. And it seemed like he was really happy. And, you know, and I can almost say that for Antonio Brown, too. These 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 players that are long, uh, you know, that have been uh, kind of trodden. And, uh, and, and to be honest, I've always kind of, you know, these diva guys, you know, and, and I think they've sort of like, well, they've did a bit of a walk of shame in a way, you know, both of them. And it's kind of n- nice to see them have have a revi- revival a little bit for themselves. Like, you can see how happy their teammates were for, like, Brady with, with Antonio Brown and, and Des Bryant. So my final thoughts is, you know, it was really good to see. I don't know, did you, I don't know, did you feel that with uh, Bryant and Brown? Yeah, I've always been a Des fan. I think people, a lot of people forget how good he actually was. Uh, those, you know, at, the, at his peak, 2011 to 2014 in Dallas, like he's 1,300 yards. He averaged like 13 touchdowns or four, almost 14 touchdowns. It's He was very, very good during those years. And then the foot injuries caught up to him and just, he never got it back. But yeah, super happy for Des catching that touchdown. You know, getting uh, get, getting another chance after the Achilles tear took away his uh his chance last year yeah and uh of course and 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 of course the cowboys game which he so wanted to play and he so wanted to play and i wanted to see him in that one too uh as i mentioned before but uh yeah i know that you uh i know that you have thoughts about josh gordon having the same thing but uh no don't bring up josh gordon he 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 is not playing tomorrow the news broke as we were talking earlier i know he's a, he might not be playing tomorrow but uh no he 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 apparently according to the nfl he has not met the conditions of his reinstatement and will not be taken off the exempt list which is kind of shady uh on the nfl's part because oh they i didn't know they that. must have known this was happening like this just just happened they he apparently did not meet the conditions of his reinstatement so he's not going to be playing they're going to leave him on the exempt list but it's shady because they would have known that he is not meeting the conditions of his you know of his reinstatement but yet the nfl allowed the seahawks to cut another receiver to open up a roster spot for gordon so i feel like this is i think the the players association should get involved on behalf of that uh, of that receiver that was cut um because that's yeah it, it all right uh everybody thanks for listening uh to the week 16 edition of the fantasy edge uh we will bring you a uh, a season wrap-up show at some point when kevin is available to do this uh, so we look forward to bringing you that um uh, for myself jonathan chan and richard seville again this has been the fantasy edge presented by fantasy six pack and we'll see you next time good night everybody <laughs>